Hi everyone and welcome to Word for Wednesday, the last one before the summer break as we move to Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Sometime after Paul wrote 1 Corinthians and sent that letter to Corinth with the church members from Chloe's household who'd come to Ephesus to visit him, Paul had made a plan to travel to Corinth to visit the church there in person and to follow up on some of the issues he'd written about in that first letter. However, his plans changed and Paul caught wind of the fact that the Corinthian Christians were criticising him, saying he'd lied to them about his intention to visit them or he'd rashly said he would come only later to fickly change his mind. So Paul writes this second letter to explain that the reason he didn't come was out of love for them because he knew that despite his first letter in which he'd addressed some contentious theological, moral and practical issues in the church. There were still some big problems there and he would have to deal with them if he visited in person and that would be painful both for them and for him. So he chooses to write instead. Now, one of the major underlying themes of 2 Corinthians is the sovereignty of God. God's wise and loving power and control over every aspect of life. Interestingly, it isn't a subject Paul addresses directly, but it's there underneath every subject he does address. So here are three examples. First, suffering. Paul has much to say about the painful reality of suffering in this letter, much of it with reference to his own experience. And though he acknowledges that people and even Satan have a hand in causing suffering, nevertheless, he rejoices that ultimately God is in control and that he has a good purpose in the suffering and is using that suffering for his glory and for Paul's good. Second, giving. Paul mentioned in his first letter the collection of money he was making around the churches to help the poor Christians in the mother church in Jerusalem. He devotes two whole chapters of the second letter to encouraging the Corinthians to step up and finish the collection they had begun some time ago. It seems they'd lost interest in it for some reason. And Paul seeks to rouse them to action by reminding them that God is sovereign in our giving. It's a demonstration of his grace. He is the one who gives us the means to give. And he is the one who gives us the motivation to give. And he is the one who gives us what we need to make up for the money we've given so that we don't go without ourselves. The third example of God's sovereignty, in addition to suffering and giving, is the gospel. Paul celebrates the biblical truth that God is sovereign in evangelism. He is the one who empowers people to share the gospel. And as they do so, he is the one who uses that preaching to open eyes and hearts that are blind and closed to the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ and enables people to see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. In other words, anyone who becomes a Christian does so by the faith creating grace and power of God. There is no other way. Well, it's a wonderful letter and I strongly commend it to you. Why don't you read it over the summer break? until we meet again in September. But for now, why don't you join me in a word of prayer? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, for the Apostle Paul. Thank you for the love he has for the churches he planted and established. Thank you, Lord, for his pastoral care for them. Lord, thank you for this particular letter, 2 Corinthians. Thank you that by your providence, he wrote it, and it's been preserved and is part of our New Testament today because there is so much that we can learn through this letter. Lord, we thank you most of all for the sovereignty of God, which just lies under the surface, not only of this letter, but under the surface of our lives and our world too. Lord, open our eyes today to the truth of that sovereignty. Help us to see you above, beneath, around in front and behind us. Lord, help us to follow in the steps of Jesus this day, living by your grace 
and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tracking with us over this last however months, many months it's been. Enjoy the summer break. Join us again in September when we pick up on the letter to the Galatians and we track on through to the Revelation and the end of the Bible. Have a great summer. See you soon. God bless.